Hello, welcome to this podcast on changing lesions during follow-up. First of all, we have to clarify that we are going to speak about a follow-up of high-risk melanoma patients, of patients with multiple nevi, so long-term follow-up. And first of all, which type of lesions do we include in a follow-up program? Uh, we mainly include flat lesions with a reticular or homogeneous pattern in dermoscopy and, of course, with no clear-cut melanoma features at the beginning of follow-up. This allows us to identify those that we call featureless melanomas. Uh, these are four melanomas diagnosed, um, and this is the picture, the, the dermoscopic feature of this melanoma at the end of the follow-up, all flat reticular lesions uh, with a slight asymmetry that were diagnosed uh, after one year follow-up and they were all in cytomelanomas. Um, usually we never follow up nodular lesions and regressive lesions. In nodular lesions this is because if we are wrong in our diagnosis we are monitoring a nodular melanoma, which means a higher breast thickness at the end of the follow-up, and extensive regress regressive lesions because uh, this is a clear-cut, uh, this is a melanoma uh, feature anyhow. Uh, also keep in mind that lesions with globules tend to grow and change faster. Uh, which type of changes do we consider for excision? Um, Dr. Salerni, with co-workers, examined uh, the so-called two-step method of digital follow-up, analyzing which type of changes usually um, lead the excision of lesions on the follow-up. And first of all, we have asymmetric enlargement, then changes in the dermoscopic structures, increase in the number of colors, and occurrence of regression structures, uh, also a focal pigment modification. Let's give a look at some examples. This is an example of an asymmetric enlargement. Only one side of the lesion is growing during this uh, one year and a half follow-up. And this is the picture at higher magnification. This was an inside of melanoma. Um, another example, one patient with multiple nevi and previous history of melanoma, and there was a sudden change in dermoscopic structures after two years follow-up. The lesion was acquiring globules, this multiple, um, multiple irregular uh, brown to black to gray globules, and this was a 0.6 millimeter Breslau thickness melanoma. Or this other example with the, region, with the lesion uh, acquiring regression structures during follow-up, and this was an inside of melanoma. Uh, finally, we can have a focal pigment modification, like in this case here. Uh, as a general rule, nevi do not change significantly over time, and this allows us uh, to identify the, these changes as um, uh, important for excision and as uh, melanoma and uh, uh, these lesions as melanoma. Uh, this is an example here of three nevi during a two-year follow-up. They didn't change significantly over time. However, sometimes some of the changes can be found also in nevi, like in this compound nevus that was asymmetrically enlarging uh, during follow-up. And in fact, also in the uh, study by Salerni and co-workers, focal changes in pigmentation and dermoscopic structures were present in both melanomas and nevi, but statistically more frequent in melanomas. Uh, asymmetric enlargement, regression, and changes in coloration were also more frequent in melanoma, but not statistically significantly. Thank you very much.